You may be seated. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. God's grace through Christ is offered to everyone, so know that whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever you're going through, you are welcome here this morning. A special welcome to all of those that are watching online. Maybe you're here in the community. Maybe you are across the country, but we welcome you and your presence. I have a couple of announcements before we get started. Tuesday at 12 o'clock, if you are here uh, and want to bop in between 12 and 1, you are welcome to stop, have a ham sandwich and a cookie, and uh, just introduce yourself to Pastor Kurt, the new pastor that will be here. That will be Tuesday at 12. Um, at the end of our service today, we are going to celebrate Holy Communion. In the United Methodist Church, everyone is welcome at our table. You don't have to be a member of this church, a Methodist, or any church. Just desire a relationship with Jesus Christ. I've got some people that will be helping me with that. And uh, as you come up, uh, you'll get a little cube of bread, and they'll say something like, this is the body of Christ given for you. Um, and you'll eat the bread, then you'll go to the next station, and there's a little cup of juice, and you'll take the juice, and they'll say, this is the blood of Christ poured out for you and you'll take the juice and then as you exit around both sides there's baskets for your cup as far as parents go we leave that decision up to you if you think this would bless your child then they are certainly welcome I thought we would uh, end our announcements today with a little bit of a trivia Larry are you ready all right let's go to the first one can anybody tell me who this is Anybody? Larry, who's this one? This is a spook. Alien. <laughs> this isn't the alien picture, is it, Madeline? <laughs> this this is, is Madeline. Madeline, please stand up. All right. Next picture. Oh, who is this one? Savannah? Savannah, is this you? Stand up. All right. Ah, uh, loves the camera. Who loves the camera? Anybody? Who is this one? Jaden. All right. Yeah, it does look like you in the eyes. All right, who's this troublemaker? Who is it? Addison, is that you? All right, stand up. You were a cute kid. All right, this one has trouble written all over it. Who's this? Casey, stand up. All right. Oh. Professional model. All right, Avery, stand up. All right. All right, that was like, stand up. That was a token stand up. <laughs> All right, let's see. How many guys do we have in the group? <laughs> Might as well stand up, Xavier. All right. Uh, the cool one, right? Let's see, who could that be? You want to go ahead and stand up, Samantha? And the cute award. All right. Good job, Emily. That is our entertainment for this morning. Did we get every? Oh, yeah, we got everybody. All right, were there any other announcements that we need to be made aware of before we get going? All right, if there are no other announcements, I am going to invite you to stand and we'll sing our first hymn.
morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Sing aloud with gladness. God is gathering the people. From the farthest parts of the earth we come. All who struggle, all who labor with new life are welcome here. Those who are weeping, God will console. Those who get lost, find a clear path home. Let us worship the God who gathers us in. Amen. Please join me in the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you for all the ways that we have been blessed in the past. And we pray that you will be with us today and every day as we look toward the future. Lord, sometimes our hearts hurt, sometimes we feel overwhelmed, and sometimes it's difficult for us to see the joy that only you can provide. Still we trust in you and place our problems in your hands. I pray that you will open our eyes and ears to your ways. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so we had, a, we had a pretty lengthy discussion Wednesday night at confirmation practice. And when we were done, we decided that... Uh, the care of our faith statements and our um, Bible verse would be placed within the confirmation students. So they brought them Wednesday night, they had to read them as practice, and they were supposed to bring them back this morning. Right, Xavier? <laughs> All right, but we are back on track, and our confirmation students are going to now share with you their favorite Bible verse and their faith statements, starting with Xavier. Hi, my name is, hi, uh, hi, my name is Xavier. My Bible verse is Isaiah 41.10. Fear though I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yes, I will help thee, yes, I will uphold thee with the right hand of righteousness. My faith statement, this verse means a lot to me because the last couple of months have been a roller coaster of ups and downs, but joining confirmation has changed me and has changed the way I have looked at things and problems. But if I really think about it, I have realized that no matter what I, what I have, God 
right there helping me through all of it. When I am having a not so great day and I feel like giving up, I ask God for help, to help me keep on pushing my way through the day. If I am having a hard time, I, time, I pray for God to help me make it through. There is not one day that I go through where God is not with me, though the challenges and the, and the fights. I, I know and hope that my family and friends will always have God in their hearts. I hope that you do too and all your friends and family. You're up, Jaden. Preach your voice. Preach your voice. Hi, my name is Jaden. My favorite Bible verse is John 4 through 9. Dot, dot, 19. The importance of loves comes up again and again. And one John, loves, love is the necessary events that Christians know Jesus. Two dot dot three through six John four dot dot nineteen. It was a commandment given by Jesus, and believers should live it. Anyone who claims to be in line but hates another Christian is actually in the darkness. Madeline, talk slowly. I will, I will. Deuteronomy 31.6, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For you, the Lord, your Savior, he is the one that goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. We are all connected through God, and we should treat others with kindness, compassion, and respect. I believe that we have a responsibility to use our talents and our characteristics to make the world a better place like God would do. I also think that faith is important. You shouldn't stop believing because everything happens for a reason. Hello, my name is Samantha. My favorite Bible verse is Joshua 1.9. I've commanded you to be brave and strong, haven't I? Don't be alarmed or terrified because the Lord is with you wherever I, you go. This is my favorite Bible verse because it lets people know that wherever you are, whoever you are, to not be afraid because the Lord will always be with you. <clears throat> The truth is, I've always been told that God was real, but I always had that question in the back of my mind, who is this God, and is he even real? Well, I just found God last year after my brother passed away. It was a hard thing for all of us. I would sit in my room at night asking myself, why us, why me? Then I found God. He was the only thing letting me sleep at night, putting my mind at ease. He was the only person telling me it's going to be okay. He led me to understand that someone will always be there for you. He helped me in a way no one has. He let me know that whatever you are going through, there will always be someone there to help. You can get through the hard. He will guide you through it, the good and the bad. God is with you wherever you go, and I hope that I will never lose my faith for him. My name is Emily, and my favorite Bible verse is Isaiah 41, 13. I am the Lord, your God, who grasps your strong hand, who says to you, don't fear, I will help you. God is our creator, our father, our teacher, but most importantly, he is the one who forgives and sees the best in us. I've always believed that everything happens for a reason, even if it doesn't feel like it. I now know that it is God who knows what is best for us, helping us through the good and bad to make us stronger. Remember the saying, God doesn't give you more than what you can handle? Going through confirmation and learning more and more about what God has done for us, I can now say with absolute certainty that this is true. He has gotten me through some really tough times, but has also blessed me with amazing friends and family to encourage and help me. 
I know I had to go through those challenges to get where I am and where I will be. The Holy Spirit is at work in my life with everything I do. Through every decision, hardship, prayer, and mistake, God is always with me, guiding me through the life he has planned. The church is somewhere we all gather to rejoice and worship, but the church is not just a building. It is the people, too, and I can't wait to be a part of that community permanently. Hello, my name is Savannah, and I chose the verse Proverbs 31, 25. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. I started having faith in God when me and my family started going through a challenging journey. I now understand how trusting my life to God was a good idea. When I think about everything going on, it seems to make me feel a certain way about myself. Though I never really liked going to church until I, until I started feeling a connection to God. I often have prayers in my head that help me see everything will get better, and it really does little by little. Our journey has been very hard for all of us, but we have learned to work through the challenges together. A few months ago, I was going through some personal struggles, but I kept praying and believing. I don't think I would be where I am at today without my faith in God. He is... He has helped me understand my worth and how to and and how to get through the challenges. Because God never left me no matter what I did or what was happening. I don't really like telling people about personal things in my life, but I know I can trust God and he And he will always be there for me. I'm so glad he has brought people in my life that have came and care about me and my family and are important to my journey. Once in a while, I get off track about how much I progressed in certain situations, but I can never let go, let go of God now. For he is now part of me. He is in everything, my past, present, and future. There are so many ways people, <clears throat> there are so many people in this room he has put and kept in my life that have each helped me in, my, in their own way. I'm super grateful for each of them in my time of need. God has taught me to not let things get the best of me. <clears throat> Persevere, have faith, and try to live the right way with his guidance. My, my favorite Bible verse is Proverbs. My name is... My name is Addison. My favorite Bible verse is Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. This Bible verse is very important to me because it truly relates to me and everything I have been through and thought about over the past couple of years. It started with not only one, but two close family members getting diagnosed with cancer. I got scared but had to try to make myself feel strong for my cousins. I, f I felt scared and didn't understand how bad things happen to good people. But I trusted the Lord and had a plan and, gave, and he gave me strength. A while after that, I went through a transition with my family. A while after that, I went through a transition with my family that I never imagined would have felt like it did. It made me feel it made me feel like God wasn't with me, and my faith got weak. I was questioning so I was questioning so much about what was happening. What was God thinking? Why is this ha happening? Why should I even believe in him anymore? After all this doubting and questioning, I realized something very important. Everything turned out to be okay, and I realized that even if you, 
Even if you think something isn't going to work out, it will. I remembered that, that God always does things for a reason, and everything that happens has a purpose. I realized that I need to always keep my faith str strong. I need to always trust God and understand that everything happens for a reason. I need to know that my heart and mind should always trust God so I can f keep my faith strong. During and after the everything I went through, my faith has gotten stronger than ever, and I need to always remember to trust God so I can keep it like that. Hold on just a second. <clears throat> you know, um, just because, just because I might not be here doesn't mean <laughs> that I would possibly forget your birthday. So, so I was trying to think what would be the most embarrassing way that I could do this. This seems like the right time. Is it your birthday Thursday? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Would you all join me in singing happy birthday? of my job. Can I start now? Yeah. Well, let me interrupt you. I want you to be comfortable. My name is Casey, and my favorite Bible verse was 1 John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. God gave us his love and forgiveness of our sins, and love like that feels really good inside. My first memory of church when I was little was coloring pictures of Bible stories during the sermon. As I grew older, I learned that they aren't just stories. They are the real version of Jesus' life. Pastor and my Sunday school teachers have taught me about Jesus and what it means to believe in him. I believe, God, I believe in God because when I have problems, I pray for help and they get fixed. I believe, in God, I believe God is helping me. God gets me through tough times and makes me feel better. Psalm 25.5 says, Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is, is in you all day long. God has guided me through life and helped me have hope for the future and have faith in him. God has given me this church family so that I learn in him in a fun group like Confirmation. Proverbs 10.12 says, Hatred stirs up conflict, but, lo but love covers over all wrongs. This means love can help bring people of God's family together, but hate spreads God's family apart. As a member of this church, I see people helping and loving one another, like at Monday Fun Day, the Soup Supper, the Steak Supper, and other activities. I hope after I get confirmed, I continue to show God's love. So we had to decide if we were going to do um, alphabetical or reverse alphabetical and uh, the other night and Xavier lost but Avery won so she gets to go last my name is Avery my Bible verse is Psalm 143 8 let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love for I have put my trust in you show me the way I should go for you I lift up my soul what this Bible verse means to me is that God will always guide me and show me my way through life and on the and on some of those days, it could be a bad day or a good day. On those bad days, it will always be for a good reason. On those good days, God makes me feel accomplished in life. An example of a day that God led me through was one day I was at the movies in Sioux City. I was walking out of the movie theater, and there was an older lady, and she needed help walking to the bathroom because she had some medical stuff going on, and she was shaking really bad. So I helped her, and later after the movie, she went up to my parents and said, your daughter did something that will lead her good, that will lead her to good things in life. This is an example of how I want to follow the great commandment. They asked Jesus what the greatest commandment was, and Jesus replied, love your Lord, wait, yeah, love your Lord, your God, with all your heart and this, and with all your soul, 
and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. That's how I want to live my life, by living and loving God and my neighbor. Well, I think it's easy to see why we are so proud of your students. What a great group. Let's say thank you again, shall we? This is that part of our service each and every week where we have the privilege of going before God as a family of faith, knowing that when we pray together, there's power in our prayers. We generally start by sharing our joys and then our concerns, so I will open it up and ask if anybody has a joy that you would like to share today. And you have to wait for the microphone so the folks at home can hear. Wow, you guys are going to be quiet. Uh, Now, Larry... Are you feeling like we could give him the microphone? Well, he's been gone for a while. I'm not sure what language he speaks now. (laughs) Michael. About three weeks, I accepted a move back to Lamar, so I'm back in the area for a while now, so until they decide to move me again. And we have alerted the authorities. (laughs) It's so good to see you guys. Welcome. Anybody else? All right, concerns, things we want to hold up before God. I'll begin and uh, mention uh, we want to remember the family of Mary and Thomas, who passed away last week at 105. Um, So what a blessing she has been to this family for so long. Um, And for those that that are guests here, um, our broadcast goes all over the country and all over the world uh, and people send in prayer requests. Today we have a young man um, that's getting ready to propose and he asks us to pray for him and he's in Florida. Uh, We have another woman from eastern Pennsylvania that asked that we pray that she is able to stay humble on her job as she faces some people that are really brutal. We have um, Seawalk Park from Korea that is asking us to pray for spiritual support. And we have a young woman um, that's waiting for her boyfriend to ask her. And, and she's from Kentucky, so I don't think they're the same person. So we'll see. You know, today we are going to spend a lot of time in just a little bit praying for these students. But I think everywhere and anywhere today, if you think that the The world is out of control a little bit. Imagine as we go to prayer that you're taking these students and all of our students, you're holding them in your hand and you're lifting them before God and you say, God, we're going to trust you with this because you're the only one that can care for them. As we go to God in prayer, I'll lead us in prayer, we'll end in the Lord's Prayer. Now in the Methodist tradition, at the end of the Lord's Prayer, we use trespasses. But in your tradition, if you have something else, feel free to pray it that way. Know that the important part is that we go to God and open our hearts. Let's pray, shall we? Gracious and loving God, divine lover of our souls, Lord, we come today... And we can't help but feel blessed, blessed by young people and old people and all the people in the middle, blessed for the life-giving rain, blessed for the green grass, the blue skies in our church family. But Lord, we also know that in the midst of this blessing, there are those that are struggling. Lord, maybe it's abuse, addiction, illness, disease, Lord, maybe it's for a family that is struggling right now to find their way through difficult times. But Lord, we ask that you would care for them, strengthen them, heal them, O God. But more than anything, Lord, we pray your presence and your peace upon each and every one that they might know that however difficult today seems, however dark the clouds might appear in this moment, that you are always with them, 
arm in arm, step for step, ready to lead them through even such a time as this. Lord, for all of this, we give you thanks and praise. Now let us join together with our sisters and brothers around the world today as we pray the prayer that your Son taught us when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, I am going to invite all the kids to come up. And Kathy Struck is going to share a message with you. And that's all you kids. All of you, come on. Well, this almost makes me nervous. Wow, <laughs> lots of kids. She's talking about you, Casey. <laughs> Good job this morning. So it's summertime, and I'm thinking that maybe your family's getting ready to go on a trip. Are you going on a vacation? I know Larry and I are getting ready to go on a trip, and so when we were getting ready to go, we had, to, we had a lot of decisions to make, like, well, when are we going to go? Where are we going to go? Are we going to drive our car? Are we going to fly? We just had a lot of, lot of choices to make. So if you were going on a trip and it was going to be a long, a long trip, your family would probably, um, you'd probably book a flight on an airplane to get there faster to enjoy it. Okay? So you've got it all planned. You're all ready to go. At the last second, you decide, you know what? I'm going to call the airport. I want to make sure everything's going to work. I want to confirm our, our airline tickets. So you call, and they say, yep, yep, we've got, we've got your place all set. Come on, we're, you, know, you're, you can go. So I'm wondering how you'd, how you'd feel when you get to the airport if they say to you, oh, sorry, we know you confirmed it, but um, hmm, something's happened, you're not going. How you feeling then? Yeah, that's probably how you feel. You feel <laughs> like crying, you feel sad, you're disappointed, right? You would be, I would be, especially if I had a big trip planned. Well, today, you comfortmans, in a way, you're getting ready, and they are getting ready for a trip. It's their Christian trip. It's their life as a Christian, because today they become a member of our church. And so they have decisions to make, too. Am I going to go to church? Do I want to keep praying? Do I still have faith in God? All of those things that we've all gone through, and, and you will, too, if you haven't yet. But today, they're going to make some promises in front of all of us. And in fact, we're going to make some promises, too, that we're going to help them on the way. And they're going to confirm their faith. That means they're going to say, yep, I want to be a Christian. Yes, I want to be a member of this church. I believe in God. Can you only imagine how disappointing if they make their confirmation and then they decide not to do it? Just like when you're going to get on an air, airplane and they say, yeah, you can come, but then something happens and they can't do it. Yeah. So what I'm, what I'm hoping that everybody thinks about today is if, if you've already confirmed how you confirmed that, if you're being confirmed how you're going to, if you're just learning how you're going to learn to be a Christian and our prayer for you guys, of course, is that God <laughs> blesses you on your journey, and congratulations on your confirmation. Let's say a prayer. God, we thank you for this day that you've created for us to live in. Lord, we ask you to walk beside us as we travel on our road to you. Keep us safe, and thank you for loving us. 
And we just got to say, God, we love you too. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you now to stand as we give thanks for all the ways that God has blessed us.
O Lord, all that we have was first given to us by you, and this morning we bring just a portion of those gifts and offer them back to you. We pray your blessing upon these gifts and upon those that have given them. Help us to use these gifts in a way so that the world would know your incredible grace and love. Use these gifts for your purposes and use our very lives also. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. This morning's scripture reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 13. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me, if you seek me with all your heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. You know, this verse this morning, um, well, I guess I should say to keep this service under two hours, I'll probably have more of a word than a message. Um, we'll try to keep it short here a little bit. This, uh, this passage is one that we bring out every year about this time, and we use it frequently for confirmation. We use it frequently for graduation. Any time that there's some special event that goes on that, that really... Uh, changes our life and points us to the future. In that very first verse in 11, it says, For surely I know the plans for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not your harm, and to give you a future with hope. Now, we all love that, right? I mean, isn't that a great thing? That is something that we can really build a foundation of faith on, that God loves us so deeply that He gives us a future with hope. But you know, I think unless we put a little context in this and we read the entire text, we really miss out a little bit. See, uh, the prophet Jeremiah had written this to the exiles in Babylon. These people were taken from their homes. They hadn't followed God's plan. They were taken from their homes forcibly. This wasn't a voluntary thing. This wasn't a vacation. This wasn't anything they wanted to do. And they were transplanted immediately from their home into another land where they lost their friends, their family, their culture, their food, their everything. Can you imagine that? Everything that you've got. Your, your, your home, your friends, everything gone instantly. You might say that this was the toughest thing you can possibly imagine. Life would never be the same for them. In, in, the, in the, another passage, it talks about um, uh, the Jeremiah encouraging them to make the best of this, to to have their children wed and to have their children's children wed. So we know this is going to be this is going to go on for at least a couple of generations. You're going to be displaced for a couple of generations. So you might think that the world looked dark at that moment. But we've all gone through that once in a while, haven't we? Anybody gone through anything in your life that seems to be a time where you just say, that's not fair. God, I don't understand. God, why me? Why us? We heard some of that in our students' faith statements today, didn't we? Tough times are part of what makes us human. Sometimes life is hard. If you, if you haven't done it yet, let me encourage you to go through and read the Psalms written by King David, someone that was blessed by God. And you're going to hear stories of, of how wonderful God is and, and, and how God is responsible for all the great things that David has been blessed with. But then you're also going to hear things about how tough it is. And you're going to hear David say, in one breath, oh God, I praise you above all. In the other one, he's going to say, oh God, why have you forsaken me for so long? Are you ever going to come back? Sometimes it can feel like that in our lives, can it? 
Oh God, why have you forsaken me? Are you ever coming back? When we read this, we end up with hope for confirmation as we look forward to lives yet to be fulfilled. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare not to harm and to give you a bright future. But you've got to know that there are going to be times that are going to be hard. Ask these folks out here. There's going to be times in your life where it doesn't go the way you planned it. There's going to be times in your life where you, where you want to cry out to God and you want to say, God, that's not fair. Why me? Sometimes our reaction to those events is to say, fine, God, if that's the way you want to do it, I'm going. I don't need a God like that anymore. If that's the way you want to treat me, God, forget it. But listen, listen to what Jeremiah says. That's why I think it's so important that we hear this, this whole text. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. See, this is about it. It says, don't leave when times get tough. When times get tough, you go and find God. You fall on your knees, you seek God, you call out and say, whatever you want. God knows your heart, and you say everything. God, I don't understand. God, it's not fair. God, why me? You can say all of those things to God, and God can handle all of that. God wants you to come when things are at the toughest. In that moment when you don't understand, when you don't know what's going on. And it's in that moment that God says, look, here's what I need you to do. Come to me. Seek me. Come on bended knee. Pray to me and God will hear you. But God calls you to do something. Remember, faith is a verb. God calls you to get up off your seat. Come to Him on bended knee and pray. And in that minute, when we do that, even when we don't understand when it's dark, even when we think it's not fair, we remember the promise. If we will come to God, if we'll seek God, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, even if you don't understand right now, plans for your welfare and not harm, and to give you a future with hope. That's God's plan for all of us here today. And God says, when things get tough, seek me, pray to me, and I will hear you. That's a future with an incredible hope. Let's pray, shall we? Oh Lord, we come today so thankful for these that are here. Lord, we thank you for faith, for love, for sunshine that comes after the clouds. Lord, I pray that each and every one here will seek you, pray to you, that they might hear you. And in the hearing, find your hope. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Mr. Strzok. Oh, I guess I go first, don't I? Yeah, it's not like I wrote it or anything. Everybody got your little pamphlets? Uh, you guys can follow along. So you probably didn't, I don't know if you knew, you knew about this or not, but did you know that you're actually going to help me confirm them? See, this is a, this is a thing that we do together. And it solidifies the unity of our faith. 
Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into God's holy church. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Today I invite Larry Strzok to come. Come forward, Larry. Oh, and introduce this year's confirmation candidates. You know, before I get into that, it's been my honor this year to get to work with this class of kids through our Wednesday night Kids for Christ. We met every Wednesday night all year long, and sometimes I wanted to wring their necks. <laughs> <laughs> That's in page three. Oh, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> but it is this morning my privilege to present this class of kids for confirmation. And when I call your name, if you'd stand up, please, and turn around and face the congregation, and then you can sit down again right away. Xavier Matthew Folk. Jaden Jane French. Madeline Marie Hoyle. Samantha Sue Hoyle. Okay, they kind of laughed at your middle name. Emily Claire Ladwig. Savannah Joy Martinez. Addison Jean Schillerberg. Casey Birthday Girl Schulte. <laughs> Avery Joe Seren, Seren, excuse me. All right. Since the earliest of times, the vows of Christian baptism have consisted first of the renunciation of all that is evil and then a confession of faith and loyalty to Christ Jesus. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. At this time, I will ask all of our candidates for confirmation to come up and stand along the altar in alphabetical order, just the way you are. Candidates for confirmation on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, answer, I do. Come on, you have to do better than that. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, answer, I do. Wow, that is so bad. Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your, as your Lord in union with the church with, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, races, and nations? If so, answer, I do. According to the grace given to you, will you maintain faithful uh, members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in this world? If so, answer, I will. And now I ask you, the congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons before you in your care. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Now let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, would you turn and kneel at the altar, please? And you've got to give me space. And if you have a dress that would not be good for kneeling, you may stand. The Lord be with you and also with you. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their, th their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John, anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in his baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all. O oh Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit. Bless this gift of water and to those who will receive it to wash away their sins and clothe them in righteousness through their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his eternal victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. In the Amen, in this uh, tradition, we don't re-baptize, and everybody here has been baptized, but what we do is we remember our baptism, and as we prepare for confirmation today, we will remember our baptism. To our confirmation students, I charge you today to remember your baptism, and in doing so, remember who you are and whose you are. Rejoice and be glad in it. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are indeed blessed. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are indeed blessed. You might need a little extra. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are indeed blessed. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are indeed blessed. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are indeed blessed. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are indeed blessed. I think we probably just poured a yes. whole bowl of all right. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are really blessed. What do you do for a birthday? A lot. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are indeed blessed. She got to be last. She should get extra. <laughs> In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are indeed blessed. You may be seated. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You're way ahead of me here. You may be seated. I'll call you up one at a time. Xavier, you might as well stay here. And I will invite all of those that are here, I will invite all of those here to be with Xavier at this particular time. Go ahead and kneel right there to come forward. You want to lay your hands on him? Xavier Matthew... 
May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Christ. Amen. As a member of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all that is in your power to strengthen its ministries? If, if so, answer, I will. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in the ministry by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. Xavier, may, the God, may God bless you and keep you today and for all time. You are a child of his. Amen. You may be seated. Jaden? Will all those that are supporting Jaden come forward? Jaden, Jane, you want to look? Yeah, there you go. May the, whole, uh, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jaden, as a member of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all that you can to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. Jaden, may God bless you and keep you today and for all times. You are a child of his. Amen. All right. Will all those that are supporting Madeline come forward? Go ahead and lay hands on her. And if you laid hands on her hard, that's probably okay. Uh, <laughs> Madeline Marie, may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Christ. Amen. Madeline is a member of Christ's Universal Church. Will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your services, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. Madeline, may God bless you and keep you today and for all time. You are a child of his. Amen. Samantha Sue, may the Holy Spirit work within you that have been born through water and the Spirit you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Samantha, as a member of Christ's Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. Samantha, may God bless you and keep you today and for all time. Amen. Will all those that are here to support Emily come forward? Emily Claire, may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Christ. Amen. Emily, as a member of Christ's Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. Okay. Just checking there. I didn't hear it. Remember, we talked preacher voice. All right. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. 
Emily, may God bless you and keep you today and for all times. You are a child of his. Amen. Savannah Joy. Will all those that are supporting Savannah come forward? This is going to be heavy. <laughs> make, your, make your hands really heavy so she feels like she's... Uh, there you go, buddy. Savannah Joy, may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Christ. You are a child of His. Amen. Savannah, as a member of Christ's Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. Savannah, may God bless you and keep you today and for all times. You are a child of his. Amen. Savannah. Oh, Savannah. <laughs> Will all of those that are supporting Addison please come forward? I think we should have got more water. Anybody want to lay a hand on her? All right. Addison Jean, may the Holy Spirit work within you that have been, been born through water and the Spirit. You may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. You are a child of his. Amen. Addison, as a member of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, presence, gifts, and your service and your witness? If so, answer, I will. Addison, may God bless you and keep you today and for all times. You are a child of his. Amen. Casey, will all of those that are here to support Casey please come forward? What's her middle name, birthday girl? All right. <laughs> Casey Beth, may the Holy Spirit work within you that have been born through water and spirit. You may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Casey, as a member of Christ's Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. Casey, may God bless you and keep you today and for all times. You are a child of his. Amen. Would all of those that are here to support Avery please come forward? This is extra special if you lean on her really heavy. Okay. Avery Joe, may the Holy Spirit work within you that have been bo having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Avery, as a member of Christ's Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. Oh, jeez. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. Avery, may God bless you and keep you today and for all times. You are a child of his. 
Amen. All right. Now, if I could get you all to come up here and line up here. Parents, you got your cameras ready? Yeah, with your certificate. Come on, line up here just the way you were. Half of you on one side. Half of you on one side. Yeah, you go over there. All right. Go ahead and take some pictures while we're standing here. Members of the household of God, I now commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks today for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ in the congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministry of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our services, and our witness, that everything in God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To all of you, our new members, I now declare that each and every one of you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever and ever. Amen. Let us welcome our newest members. All right, you may be seated until you help me with communion in just a second. Yeah, we'll figure something out. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Get back up here, everybody. Get back up here. You have a special, special gift. These were sewn by hand. Come on, come on in, Sandy. <laughs> well done. Thank you. I can't think of a better time to celebrate communion than at a time when we celebrate these young people. I invite you now to join me, and it'll be on the screen, or you can find this. You, there you go. Or you can find this in your hymnal on page 13. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered in the upper room with his closest friends, and as they prepared to eat, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, O God, broke the bread, 
gave it to his disciples and said, Here, take, eat from this, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, O God, gave it to his disciples and said, Here, take, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for your sins and the sins of the world that we might know a new and everlasting covenant. Drink this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body of Christ. Are you, there you go. <laughs> the body of Christ uh, and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. I am going to invite those that are assisting to come forward at this time. I'll need, I don't know how many of you I need. You switch off and you guys can help. Oh, one for you. Okay, you guys are going to switch, okay? All right. You guys be on the support. And then, and then we'll switch here in a little bit so everybody gets to help. All right, we will, be, we will begin, we'll do a second shift here in a minute. We'll begin with the choir, then we'll start in the front. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the table is set, the feast is ready, our Lord bids us, come.
When we have um, when we have Kids for Christ or Monday Fun Day or one of those days, face them, not me. I've seen them. <laughs> as we as we do this on one of those days, one of the things that we always do is the kids will will uh, learn how to shout Amen really loud. But in this particular time, what we're going to do is we're going to shout Praise God. One, two, three. Oh, that was just horrible. <laughs> we do this with the kids, too, so you're right there. One, two, three. Praise God! Amen. <laughs> you may sit. Sisters and brothers, as we prepare to leave this sacred place and enter back out into the world for one more week, remember, fear not, do not let your hearts be troubled, and in the midst of the storm, remember to trust in God. And may the blessing of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit go with you today and every day. Go with God, and God will surely go with you. Amen.
opportunity to greet our confirmands in the uh, fellowship hall. Go in peace. Amen.